Hey, look what I got just for paying the tow fee. Nice. Hey guys, I haven't done a video in a while and me and the pups are out. There's Ida Mae, she's getting big. And this is an old, what is this here? An, um, Niagara, which is a Coleman. And it has been completely dissected. Look up here and you see the big roof section come off of it. Uh, we do a wreck out on these things. Now there was a refrigerator sitting here. This whole thing had to be sprayed down. And this is why the owners didn't want it no more mouse infestations you get that a lot and look over there where they built lots of nest there's a lot of water damage all the parts that we take out of here we reuse in most conditions you'd be surprised with this little sweep people want that um the hardware this was uh this had a big slide on it so this is a pop-up camper but it had a slide that came out right here and here's all of its parts laying out here so there you go. Now, we've got a couple of them. I'm going to show you right quick before we go into the shop, and I'm going to show you the process. When you get recyclables, there's all the hardware right there for the slide, all that jazz. And Daniel's out here. He's done take apart a whole bunch of this. Now, free. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's a hobby. It's fun, and it's profitable. So let me show you this other one. This other one's going to blow your mind. It has got a very large... Uh, diesel engine in it, a 7.3. We got that one for free. Let's get over there. All right, now here's the other one. There's my truck sitting next to it, and here it is out in the field. And come here, let me show you something. This one here, 27,000 original miles. This one here is 200,000, but it's a diesel engine, and it has quit. So they blew a um, jug out of it i guess you call it a sleeve they blew the sleeve out of this engine so it's a 7.3 engine with the sleeve fractured so it's got piston failure now it's got everything in it you could imagine it's got the bully dog it's got all kinds of parts nice little radio and up in here it has some batteries some solar and up on the roof some solar and that's what we're doing today we're pulling parts We'll be on that bounder pretty soon, and guess what? That bounder was abandoned, and what'll shock you is why. Fuel pump. 27,000 miles, fuel pump. Fixed it, drove it, parked it out here in the field. Now we're waiting on the title for it. But you look in here, and you see all the stuff they were setting it up, and this is a sad story. These people really worked hard trying to set this thing up, but... Thousands put on a new transmission, everything else done to this thing, and a 7.3 took a dump at 200 and, not 220, 226,000 miles. So not, it's not a lot of miles for a 7.3. Um, but here it sits, there's Daniel on the back. It's got two brand new fantastic fans. All kinds of stuff has already been removed out of here. And this is still what's left. This is a common thing when you get these RVs. People just have had enough, and that these people spend a lot of money. They're an older couple, and they spent too much. But we're pulling the batteries, the controller, and all the stuff that goes with it. And somewhere up here on the roof, they're wired. So let's get out here right quick and get the release on it. Okay, and now sitting up on the top looks like a 150 watt 12 volt solar panel. So our job today is removal. We're taking all these parts off. We'll eventually be pulling these two new fan units off. And there's that real cool bounder. You can look at a lot of the old stuff tore apart out here. This is a hobby that's fun and pays. Well, there we go. All right, let's go to the shop. I'll show you some of this stuff laid out and what we pulled out of here. There's even a huge battery down there at the base of this thing, Monster 8D. So here we go. Oh, and yeah, right before we get to the shop, this is gonna show you how depressing it is to blow the motor. They put these tires on literally just 300 miles ago 300 miles ago but it's a shot motor you can't uh you can't blame them for giving up on it pull that up here big seven three but it's right down there there's a the side of the valve cover popped out can it be fixed who knows we'll check but i doubt it 
All right, guys, here's the collection of stuff out of that black bus, little black bus. Here is a, whatever they are, it's a Bimart battery, July of 2020. They just put that battery in. Here are two of the big Duracells made by East Penn. And here is one here that is nine, I believe it is, he has nine of March, so March of 2019, this big D size or class D battery, whatever. And then here's two of these. And up here we have a 200 watt Sonali solar from India. These are made in India, so it's a big, huge solar panel. And there was even a battery charger sitting in it. And a Kisei, I believe it is. Uh, let me look at it right quick. Controller. So you have a Kisei controller that was inside there also. Let's head in that shop and you'll see what I'm talking about. About recycling the RVs. All right, now here in the shop, we have a assortment of parts that just came out of that little Coleman. We have a water heater, looks pretty good. We have a little refrigerator and the refrigerator, we plugged it in about an hour ago. It's got this trim package where it requires being screwed in. And let's see, 47, 48 degrees. And in here in the shop, it is 57. So it's already dropped by 10 degrees. 41 over there 40 so it gets colder on that side first there we go 36 but if you get an old refrigerator like this the first thing now this one here is everything it's ac dc and gas so you see the controls right there ac i'm sorry dc ac and gas we switched it to ac now one of the things that you want to do is you want to get you a multimeter or you want to get you a watt meter now, the reason you want a watt meter is so that you can look and see what your watt reading is going to be on it. So let me turn it off right quick. And you can see here that it's producing, here we go, right here on the stack pipe here, on the pipe, 137 degrees, 160, there we go. That's more like it, about 160 into the back of this. It's pretty clean. And then I'll power back on. It doesn't shut itself off at about 40 degrees inside the refrigerator which is what they should do now you can trick these and turn this little refrigerator like this one into a actual deep freeze a little miniature deep freeze and i've done this before there's the specs on it nor cold um one of the things you can do see that little free freeway but you always want to try to get you one of these little p3s the little kilowatts so that you can find out when you plug in so say you got an rv at your house you don't know if the refrigerator works it don't work you plug it in you can't tell if anything's happening so you let it sit there all day long it's kind of risky in some cases i mean mice could have chewed into something you could have a fire but if you use this a p3 like that you immediately get a reading that it is pulling power same thing if you have the electric element inside of a water heater see that looks pretty clean so mid-2000s, I guess that camper is. But the same thing here. You have an electric element to find out whether it's shorted or not. You'll find it out real quick with that and or a multimeter. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little walkabout around my heaps and junk piles and crap that I'm doing. So you guys be good. Uh, if y'all want parts from that diesel, the bully dog, the computer, whatever stuff that's in it, if it's any good, uh, post below. Maybe I'll get rid of it. I don't have use for it. All right.